Okay, so we're going to be doing um, further stats one, chapter three, which is the geometric and negative binomial distributions. And so let's just get started straight away, really. Um, in this chapter, we're going to be learning about two more discrete distributions. So the outcomes are discrete, which is basically what most of, um, of further stats one is. If you're doing further stats two, you'll see there's more continuous kinds of things that are discussed. Anyway, here's the motivation for why we're going to be learning about them. I'm not going to actually answer these questions, but we're going to try and see how these things are different. And I'll tell you where they're going to sit with what we'll be studying in this chapter. So it says here that the probability of winning a teddy bear in a fun fair game of hook a duck is 0.2. So pretty good chances of winning. You've got a one in five chance of winning. And that there are three different scenarios that we've got here. One of them should be familiar. And then two of them are going to be what these new kinds of distributions are going to be. So the first one says, if I play the game 10 times, so I'm only going to play it 10 times. I want to know the probability that I win at least one teddy bear. Well, I'm hoping this one feels familiar. I'm hoping you're thinking this is like, oh yeah, this is a distribution I recognize. This is going to be a binomial distribution. And the binomial distribution, we are playing the game 10 times, and the probability that you're going to win is 0 0.1. So we're saying if it's how many teddy bears that are being won, I would say that x has a binomial distribution. And I'm actually asking myself, what is the probability that I win at least one teddy bear? That's what I'm asking myself in this question that I've got, okay? Now, the second one, I'm not going to answer it either. It says, I play the game until I win a teddy bear. So I'm not going to be doing a binomial anymore because in a binomial, I have a fixed number of trials. I'm only going to play it 10 times. But in this one, I'm going to play it until I win a teddy bear. So I might play it once if I win the first time, but I also might play it 30 times if I got incredibly unlucky and kept uh, picking a duck that didn't have a winning prize with it. So this one is a new kind of distribution. This is going to be called a geometric distribution and we write it as geo and in brackets we put the probability of something being successful. Um, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about this later on. This time x is, represent, is representing something different. It's representing how many trials you need to do the thing. So in this time x represented how many successes there are. This time x is representing how many trials you're going to be doing it. And it's really asking us here, I have to say what is the probability that I play the game at least seven times. So I'm going to be asking myself, what's the probability that I play it seven times or more? And then the last one, I want to see if you can figure out what seems different about these wordings here. It says, I want to win exactly three teddy bears. What is the probability that I win the third teddy bear on my 15th attempt? So this one is a different one. This one is going to be the third kind of distribution, which we either say as NB for negative binomial, or you might see me later on writing it as negative binomial like this. And this one's different. The reason this one is different is because this time I want to win three teddy bears. In the first one, I didn't know... Um, I didn't know how many I was going to win, but I wanted to win exactly three teddy bears in this third one. And in the second one, I stop when I win a teddy bear. So this one is different because we're actually trying to get three teddy bears in this case. And what we're doing is we're saying we're going to get three teddy bears is the, the goal that we are aiming for. And the probability of winning is 0 0.2. And we're saying, what is the probability that I win the teddy bear on my 15th attempt. So again, in this case, uh, x is representing how many attempts it is. So we've got three different kinds of distributions. We've got our binomial, which is our first one that we've already been familiar with before. We've then got our geometric distribution, which is going to be what we focus on for the first half of this chapter. And then we've got our last kind of one, which is the negative binomial. And I wanted to kind of introduce this at the beginning of this playlist so that it kind of you get a sense of what we're actually doing. They, they don't sound quite as scary. I think geometric and negative binomial sound like, oh, my God, what are they going to be? But you've already got now like a taste of what these three things will be. And of course, I'm going to explain them in a lot more detail than I have done just here. So we're going to begin by looking at the geometric distribution. And just to kind of mention a few of these things, this is really important when they talk about like when you can use a geometric distribution. This applies when you want to find the number of trials required to achieve only one success. And just like binomial, we want the trials to be independent of each other. We want the probability to be fixed. And yeah, we want there to be two outcomes, success or failure. It wouldn't work if we're talking about, I don't know, getting like, three different kinds of things. It has to be a success or a failure. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine a game where you win 20% of the time, just like the hooker duck example that we talked about in the previous slide. And we are only interested in winning once. And after we win, we stop playing. So you can start to see the kinds of scenarios where this might be happening if you're trying to be successful in something and as soon as you're successful, you're done. I think the one that's kind of mentioned in the textbook is about passing your driving test. Um, but maybe passing the driving test doesn't necessarily fit some of these things. Maybe they're not going to be independent of each other. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. So we're going to let X represent the number of trials. In other words, the number of games to be played. So this is saying, what is the probability that I win the hooker duck on the first time that I play the game? And pretty obvious is a 20% chance that you're going to win the duck on the first time that you play. Now, if you're going to win the duck and you're going to, sorry, if you're going to need to do two trials to, we're not even winning a duck here. If we're going to do two trials to win the prize in hooker duck, well, you have to fail it the first time in order to play it the second time, and then you would win it on the second one. So it's not saying like in two or less, it's saying if you win it on the second one, you have to fail and then you have to win. So if it's going to be for three of them, well, you would want to fail it on the first two times, and then you would want to win it on the third time. And if you were going to win the prize on the fourth one, you would want to be unsuccessful for the three times and then you'd want to be successful on the fourth time. And as you can imagine, for winning it on the fifth one, you want to be unsuccessful on the fourth one, fourth for the first four and then successful on the fifth one. And so for this more general situation that we've got here, we would say that you would want to, looking at this pattern, we want to have a failure which is one minus the probability. Because in this case that we've got of this geometric distribution, we've said the probability of winning was 0.2. So we've obviously got our one minus P for this 0.8 bit that we've got here. And it looks like whatever, say you're doing it four times, you want to fail it three times. And if you want it to be on the fifth one, you're failing it four times. So if I'm wanting it to be on the X one, I'm going to want to fail it X minus one times. And then I'm going to want it to be successful on the last trial that we've got like that. OK, now you might see this written in a slightly different way in the formula book. They put the success to begin with and then they put the failure afterwards like this. But of course, like the order of these things doesn't matter at all. And I've said, note there is no upper limit for X. And why is this the case? Well, you'd be very unlucky, but there is a, a theoretical scenario where you could continually fail, 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 like for an infinite number of times, meaning it would be 0 0.8 to a very high power, then multiplied by 0 0.2. The, in reality, though, it does trail off and the probabilities become very, very low. So there is no upper limit for X. Why is this the case? And that's because... you could keep failing repeatedly. But in reality, the probability of, of failing, 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 failing gets very, very small very quickly because you're doing 0 0.8 to quite a large power. Let's say we're going to do it failing 30 times and then being successful. If I just very quickly do that on my calculator, 0 0.8 to the power of 30 and then multiplied by 0 0.2 is 0 0.00024. So it gets very, very small probabilities very, very quickly here. So how is a binomial different to a geometric? Well, a binomial, we would write in this particular way. We would say that a binomial has um, X as the number of times that something is being successful. We say it has a binomial distribution when it is being done N times with a fixed probability. And the kind of the question we ask ourselves is how many times X will this thing be successful if I do it N times? And it's the fixed number of trials and the outcomes are how many of those trials are successful. So the outcomes can only be failing every time or one, two, three, all the way up to the number of trials that you're doing something. Now for geometric, you write it in this way. So you do X is distributed with a geometric distribution. And there's only one sort of parameter that we have here, which is the probability. And it's asking us a question or the question we're really analyzing here is how many times X do I need to do this until I get a success? And it's a fixed number of successes. Only one success is needed. Whereas in this one, it was a fixed number of trials. And the outcomes are how many trials are required for success.
And so the number of trials that are required for success, I've said that that's the natural numbers, which is one, two, three, four. In theory, just keeps going and going and going. OK, so obviously you can't have zero because you can't be successful with zero trials in this particular case. So I guess for this previous example, what I could have said is that X is a geometric distribution with a probability of 0 0.2. And in this case, we're saying that X is the number of trials playing the game or the number of tries playing the game. until a prize is won. Okay, so why is it called a geometric distribution? It seems like an odd word for them to kind of throw in with this. Well, in the previous example, like I said, we would have said that X has a geometric, a geometric distribution 0 0.2, where X is the number of trials required to get one success. And more generally, we would say that X has a geometric distribution P, where P is the probability of success. So let's just quickly go through and see if we can look at what it is. This time, more generally, we did it previously with numbers. We're now just going to be thinking, OK, what happens if I was successful on the first try? Well, if I was successful on the first try, it would be P. If it was the second try, I would want to fail and then have a success. The third try would be failing twice and then successful on the third. It would be failing three times here and then successful on the fourth. And we actually even said that for x being equal to x, I think we said it up here, it's this one, isn't it? You want to fail one less than the number of times we're looking at. So I want to fail it x minus one times and then I want it to be successful for this last part. Well, this is the reason it is called a geometric, okay, because we can see that there's like a, a sequence um, of these values. We have P, 1 minus PP, P, 1 minus P squared P, 1 minus P cubed P, etc. So this actually thing that we've got here, this is a geometric sequence. And if you haven't looked at geometric sequences before, um, I'm just going to kind of use some of the language that we have here. We would say that the first term, we use the letter A for the geometric sequence is P. And we would say that the common ratio, what it's getting multiplied by each time, well, as you go across each time, it's getting multiplied by 1 minus P. And a geometric sequence is a sequence where each time you move across one position, it is um, being multiplied by something. And in this case, it's being multiplied by 1 minus P. And so now I'm asking myself this question, what would be the sum of all of these probabilities if we went all the way up to infinity? And remember, we said there's no upper limit on the geometric distribution here. Well, this would then become, instead of it being a sequence, it would become a series where I'm doing P plus 1 minus P, P plus 1 minus P squared P, etc., and that's really what this language is just saying. It's saying what is the probability of it being 1 plus the probability of it being 2 plus the probability of it being 3, etc, etc, all the way as we go along. And this is a geometric sequence uh, series. And this geometric series has the formula that the sum to infinity that we're doing here is the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So I wonder if you can predict what you think the sum of all of the probabilities will be. Well, it is a over 1 minus r. The first term is P, and the common ratio is 1 minus P. So the denominator becomes 1 minus 1 plus P. So we get P divided by P, and P divided by P is 1. So just as we were hoping, all of these probabilities have to add up to 1, because if you're going all the way up to infinity, eventually you're going to get that first success that we've got there. So that is why it is called the geometric distribution. And what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to consider cumulative probabilities, because right now we've just been doing probabilities when they are equal to particular values.